Now, let me just say a few words about approximating unitary operators. We will need this concept because uh, having a finite set of gates, we would like to build any unitary operations of our choice with certain precision. And now, of course, uh, having a finite set of gates, it's, it's impossible just to cover the whole continuum of all possible uh, unitary operations. So we will have to be satisfied with approximating unitaries with a certain precision. So what does it mean that uh, uh, to, to, to approximate a, a given unitary with a certain precision? Uh, so let me first um, write the expression and I'll try to explain all the details. So we have to introduce a notion of a distance between operators uh, acting on vectors in the, in the Hilbert space. And uh, the distance between the two unitaries, u and u tilde, will be um, defined using the operator norm. So I say that u is uh, epsilon close to u tilde if this distance is um, smaller than epsilon. Now, um, the operator norm that is inducing this metric here um, should be familiar to you, but just for completeness. If I have operator A and uh, uh, this operator is acting on on the vectors in a vectors in a vector space, so I, you, you, may, you may just visualize the norm as follows. So you just consider the, a unit ball in, in this vector space that A is acting on and think about the image of this unit so A will map it into something, and that something will be ellipsoid of some sort. Y you know, A being a linear operator, it will just rotate this unit ball, but may also stretch it or contract in some directions. So um, the norm of A is essentially the, the largest stretch that you see in the vector space. So in this case, if you look at the principal axis of this ellipsoid, um, then uh, those vectors will correspond to eigenvectors and the largest eigenvalue or the more precisely the, uh, the, um, the largest absolute value of, uh, you look at the absolute values of uh, eigenvalues and the largest one will correspond to this norm of A. So you see that uh, those eigenvectors are stretch and the largest stretch is the norm. So clearly, if you have a unitary operator, you know that uh, unitary is, is a isometric um, in, in, the, in, in your vector space. So it doesn't stretch, it doesn't contract, it just rotates. Um, so hence, the, the norm of any unitary operator is equal to 1. So then, in order to define the distance, then we just take the difference between the two operators and take the the operator norm. Of course, there are many other norms you can choose, but uh, we will be actually only using uh, this one and another one that we will that will pop up later on will be the trace norm. But for now, we just simply use the operator norm. So in order to get the distance of the metric, you just take the difference between the two operators and take the norm of this of this dif uh, difference. Now, um, it is it should be clear that this is a a good uh, a good metric because uh, you know as any metric it has to satisfy three properties and uh, you can see that the distance uh, if if u tilde is the same as u then the difference is zero so the distance is zero so um, so that's fine and the other property is that it's symmetric so the distance between u and u tilde is the same as the distance between u tilde and u. And the triangle inequality is something that you can you can you can just uh, work out yourself. Now, um, what is more important here is the the physical meaning of this expression. What does it really mean physically? Well, think about uh, it this way. So, suppose uh, I have a unitary operation acting on some system. It could be a qubit. Just think about a circuit. So, one of them is u, and the other one is just u tilde. And uh, when, the, when the two operators are uh, close to each other, so not further away than further apart than, than epsilon, then if you perform any measurement at the output uh, here, then um, 
the probability. So say you measure whatever. It could be that it's a qubit and you measure the, um, you want to see whether it's in a zero or the one state. Um, and you are looking at the probability of, of, of this. So say that the probability of a measurement of your choice is P. And here you measure exactly the same property. Uh, but in this case, uh, the system that starts in the same state, so we should probably just, I should have mentioned, restart in, restart in the same state of sign. Um, so here we just apply U tilde and we get some other probability um, of measuring exactly the same property, but uh, we get some probability P tilde. So if the two unitaries are at most epsilon distance from each other, then uh, the, 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 the difference in probability, so p minus p tilde, is going to be smaller than 2 epsilon. So that's, that's something that uh, I will leave as an exercise for you. Um, one important property, apart from the physical interpretation that uh, we are going to use, is um, how um, the, the precision uh, scales when we concatenate unitaries. So imagine a situation where I have U that is constructed as a sequence of gates U1, U2, U sub K, to U capital M. And then um, you realize this sequence by approximating every single element in this sequence. So you don't you don't have U1, but you, you can construct U tilde 1. So you can also construct U tilde 2 and so on and so forth. So you have U tilde K and U tilde capital N. So that's uh, your unitary operator U tilde. You can then use the properties of uh, the distance to show that if um, each approximation, so let's say, let let's say that this approximation here, so that u tilde sub k and u k are at most delta sub k away from each other. So then we can show that the distance between u and u tilde is um, bounded by the sum over k delta sub k. So you see the the error in our approximation only grows as uh, uh, linearly with the number of uh, uh, approximating unitaries that we have. So that means for example that if we want to implement uh, u with precision, we want to uh, implement u with say precision epsilon, <coughs> then if we have n gates, <coughs> capital N gates, then uh, each of them has to operate with, so we have, we, we require that each of them has to approximate uh, the, the, um, the corresponding uh, uh, gate U sub K with uh, precision that is uh, epsilon over, over capital N. So this is a good news for quantum computing simply because um, if we want to implement a sequence of uh, unitaries and uh, each component cannot be precisely realized but only with a certain approximation, um, then um, a sequence of uh, N gates that uh, approximate N unitaries there gives you a, a, a decent precision. The precision will um, just uh, scale, the error will scale linearly with the size of uh, the, uh, the sequence here, which is, which is good. Which is, um, y y this property is actually only true for unitary operators. In fact, uh, uh, deriving this, uh, this uh, formula here, we use uh, the fact that the norm of the unitary operator is equal to one. It's actually quite essential for the derivation of this. You give it a try and you will see. Um, then um, for some other operators it could be uh, much worse, so the, the scaling of errors could uh, uh, just be even exponential. So we somehow um, with unitaries we are okay and the errors grow 
um, nicely in, in a linear fashion.